What's Gucci, everybody? It's AJ back again, and today I want to talk about a little obscure topic called maximal matching. And I didn't really see a good tutorial on YouTube of this video of this, so I decided to make one. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we got here is a little problem that is maximal matching. It's in graph theory, and what we have here is a graph. Um, let's say the workers are represented by letters and the jobs are represented by numbers, one, two, three, four. And let's say that each arrow is representing the job that a worker can work. Each job, it's important to know this, each job can only be done and satisfied, can only be filled by one worker, and workers can only do the jobs their skill they have the skill set for, which are denoted by these arrows. So A, the A worker can only work jobs 2 and 4. B can only work 3 and 4. E can work 1, 3, 4, 5. That's why you go to college to be like the E vertex over here. And as you see, the problem is here with maximal matching is you want to give the most, assign the most workers to the most jobs so that everyone, at least some people, can have a job. Now, in some cases, the, you, you may be able to create the most, the maximum matching, but someone will still not be able to get a job. Okay, and so, as you can see, this graph has some highlighters here. And let's say your boss comes to you, and he's not too good at math, and he says, yo, Apple Juice, I want to figure out how to best disperse my workers so I can get the most jobs done. And this is how I think of, I can be done. And he basically set basically says, "Oh, hey, I've got two, I've got three workers working three different jobs, and I can't figure out. I don't think two workers are needed because though their job slots are filled, and so I don't need them. And we're gonna have two jobs we don't need, and that's okay. And." You look at it and you're like, wait, there'd be maybe another way to include one or two more workers to this picture if you assign them to a different job or keep them at the right job. And that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on the algorithm to figure that out. As you can see here, whoa, we have a table which represents the graph I showed you of here where the ones are where the ones are the the edges or the connections between the numbers and the letters and the sp and the little starred ones are the matchings that your boss initially gave you that you're initially given the matching so a to 2 e to 1 and b to 3 a to 2 b to 3 and e to 1 are the matchings now i have to figure out if i can switch any of these matchings around for more than three. The maximum would obviously be five, where I could get all the workers to work. The maximum would always be the minimum of the workers column or the jobs column, which here I've represented as the X column, A, B, C, D, E, and the Y column, one, two, three, four. That's how I usually denote them and how a few, at least VT professors, denote them. And obviously the minimum that you could maximum matching that you could do would be the minimum of either the x column or the y column as i said so we need to figure out if we can switch these matchings and create a bigger one also note that the same matchings that the matching ones are ne neither come across each other in the same row or the same column they each are al the matchings are alone with their same row and same column and this is a very important as if the, if it broke this rule it would not they would not match up because let's say three, um, if we transferred a mat this star from B3, from A2 to B4, then B would be working two jobs and that's impossible and it's also vice versa the other way. So on to how we're going to figure this out. And obviously you may be able to look at this and figure out, oh hey, if I get rid of this one and this one and put one right here right here and right here I would have four well what if you have thousands of these you would need 
an out you couldn't just do it by hand you would need an algorithm to try to figure this out and what i'm here for today is to go over that brand spanking new algorithm so here we go the first thing i want to do is create a forest which is a tree that that connects to the other x vertices vertice, vertices and the y vertices and how i set up this tree is by step 1 i want to find I want to look at the graph and see if there are any rows that do not have any matchings in them. So C and D do not have any ones with stars in them or any matchings. So those are the two vertices I'm going to start my search with. And what I want to do is I want to alternate between rows and columns while I make my tree. So I want to go X, Y, X, Y, as we'll show again and try to include all of the vert vertices. Note that I cannot use the same vertices in my tree if I come across. So let me try to show you the more of an example. So I'm going to go, I'm looking at C here, and I notice that C has two vertices available. It has the, number, the Y vertice of 2 and the Y vertice of 3 available, and so does D. Now, there are multiple solutions to match more graphs usually. So I could make a tree that just had that just had two and three coming out of D or two and three coming out of C and nothing come out of D because I'm not allowed to use the same vertice twice in this. So if I use two and three for one of them, one of the trees would already be done because I would have nowhere else to go. But for this case I decided to use to let C use three and D use two. And so I'm going along those, and my next step is I want to, I'm looking at this, and I'm, I go to C, and I choose 2, and then I want to start looking up the rows. And I'm at row 2 here, and if I see a matching, a matching edge, I immediately want to go to that. So I see that matching edge, and I want to go to that. So that is A, and so now I am at vertex A, because I'm alternating between X and y and x i've now gone from c to i went from the column c to the row 2 to now the column a again and let's say let me continue this and i didn't do anything for d it's okay now i'm going to continue d and what i did is i went from i i did d and then i went to 3 and then i found the matching in b and i went to b and i don't know should i just draw a little line for you guys uh, here we go. Boom. Okay, so not the best line. And now in the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on that B, and I'm going to go from B to 4, because that is the only choice I have in that column. And, well, that's, and that's what I got here. You guys should be getting the hang of it. I have to alternate between X and Ys. And notice I don't have any duplicates here. And now, let's see. I have I went I just went from 4 to E. And now I'd like to notice my choices at E. I could go to 1 which is a matching which I would like a lot, but I note but I I'm also noticing something here, something that is very important about this algorithm. I am noticing that this 4 if you notice here there is a matching between every y point. So I'm looking at this y vertex here and I'm like, okay, it has one matching edge connecting to it. And so does this 3 here. So that and that's what you want. But this 4 does not have a matching edge. So what I need to do is I need to recalibrate. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down this 4 starting at the 4 where I don't have anything and I'm going to go back up the back up the only the tree that I, I'm having problems with the forest sorry and I'm going to get rid of that star and I'm going to remake the matchings that I want here so I'm gonna do every other matching that the matching I didn't have so I initially had a matching here but that's not gonna work out if I get a matching over there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign a matching here this isn't working. I'm going to sign a matching here. 
and I'm going to assign a matching here. Note that I skipped over the initial matching. I want to do every other matching. I want to assign matchings to everything else but the matching. So I want to do the reverse. And now that 4 is satisfied. That 4 has a matching connected to it because I now have matchings connected to all the y. And notice now, and so what I've done now is I've created a new matching. I've now said D3 is a matching and B4 is a matching, but I want to get rid of B3. And that is shown in the next slide where I have created a new graph note where I have A2 and E1. I've kept A2 and E1 the same, but I now have D3 and B4 as my matchings. Now, what I need to do now is I need to make sure that I can't make another bigger matching. And I do this by drawing another forest using the same rules. So this time with my new matching, the only free vertex is C. And I'm going to choose, I chose two and three. I have A, I went to two, and I went to A, then I went to four, then I went to B. And then I couldn't go anywhere else because three was my choice, but I already have three here. And so I stopped at B. That's very important. And then I, I went to three. I did three and I went to D and when I went to D I could only go to two but that had already been used over here so I ha so I'm done this force is complete and that tells us that we have a maximum matching because we have a complete force where all the X vertices the X circles have a matching um, either before them or after them and so you know you've created the maximum matching if you didn't you would just run the same algorithm again until you got it now, if you noticed here, I mentioned, I just want to reiterate a quick fact that there are multiple answers to this. And the multiple answers are derived from if you drew the initial graph differently. This is going back to one of the first steps. If I remember when I was telling you about you connect, could connect two with three and then do it, well, that's how you would get a different answer. But you would still get the maximum matching graph because it, it is shown that in this set you can only have four matches. So you can go tell your boss, oh, hey, I can get four workers to work instead of the initial three that you said, Dumbo. And so we don't have we don't have to fire one guy, but we still have to give one guy the fire unless he gets some additional skills. OK, guys, I hope this tutorial isn't long to you and I hope you got it completely and I hope you have a fabulous day. Watch Breaking Bad. It's my favorite TV show. Have a good day.